All right, so it was in September of 1970. <clears throat> I was serving with a reconnaissance platoon, uh, 3rd Battalion of the uh, 4th Infantry Division, and uh, we were patrolling a mountaintop, and I managed to find my way into a field of punji stakes. So I was medevaced off uh, into the hospital to a base camp and spent about two and a half weeks there. And when I came back out, uh, back to the field, our, we had been assigned a new lieutenant, and Bobby R. Williams was his name. Brand new, green in the country, just out of school. And he took over our platoon. I had never met the man until that day. And as we spoke, and I kind of told him a history about what had happened, he said, well, why don't you just stay back this trip? This is just a short, we're just making a short patrol. We won't be gone very long. And then, you know, either we'll come back and get you or you catch up with us. So he took, I, as we all did as squad leaders in the provinces, but to the squad leaders typically were running, walking point. So it was my squad's turn to be on point that day. And he volunteered to take my place with my squad. They didn't get too far away from the base camp because we could hear it all on the radio and they were ambushed. And um, Bobby being in the position I was, was the one that was killed that day. So this is the emotional part is without him doing that, the likelihood of my being here today is slim. I've been blessed with a great family, a great career, great life. Not really old out to him. He was wounded on the 9th of July, and he died on the 29th of July, just two days after I got back out onto the field. Or not July, excuse me, September. It was the 9th of September that I was wounded, and the 29th of September 1970 that he was killed. <laughs> 